Hello, you're watching Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Kikon. The governor of Nagaland, Professor Jagdish Muki, has said that Nagaland celebrating its statehood day is also an opportune moment to reflect on its miscalculated steps and blunders, engage on core issues, and put in more concerted efforts towards attaining a progressive state. Raj Pavan issued a copy of the governor's speech on the occasion of Nagaland Statehood Day. In his message, Professor Jagdish Muki said, Nagaland has experienced unprecedented progress in every sector and emerged as one of the promising states in the growth narrative of the country since attaining statehood on December 1, 1963. As the state celebrates six decades of statehood, he said now, would also be an opportune moment to reflect on its miscalculated steps and blunders, deliberate and engage on core issues and put in more concerted efforts towards attaining a transformed and progressive state. Every citizen of the state, every farmer, every entrepreneur, every sportsperson, every leader, every mission, church and civil society organization has a vital role, none undermining the other and can be agents of change in thrusting the state forward. Muki said, he advised against nepotism, OPEC administration, corruption and anything that corrodes a society. These practices have no place in Nagaland. He called for a pledge to aspire to be one such state where meritocracy, transparency and accountability in governance have primacy over parochial and self-interest gains. This is the only way to probable Nagaland and establish itself in, in this otherwise fast-paced world of globalization and modernity, he said. The governor has urged the people to unite in the spirit of fraternity to build a better and transformed Nagaland for posterity and take the state and its people to greater heights and glory. No Sazol Charles and T. Kekong Chim Yim Kyung today sworn in as State Information Commissioners at Dr. Imgong Liba Ao Hall, Rajpavan in Kohima. The oath was administered by Governor of Assam and Naglin, Professor Jagdish Muki, in the presence of the Chief Minister of Naglin, Nipirio, bureaucrats, and officials from various departments. That I will duly and faithfully to the best of my ability, knowledge and judgment perform the duties of my office without fear or favor, affection or ill will, and that I will uphold the Constitution and the laws. Having been appointed the State Information Commissioner of the State of Nagaland, solemnly affirm that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of India as by law established. That I will uphold the sovereignty One person was killed in political clashes that broke out between Communist Party of India Marxist and Bharatiya Janata Party workers at Charilam area under Sibahi Jala district of Tripura. The deceased has been identified as Shahid Mia who arrived at Charilam market to attend the CPIM rally. He received injuries to the head that reportedly, reportedly led to his death. He was evacuated by fire brigade troopers and shifted to GPP hospital in Akartala for treatment, where he breathed his last. Amar, <laughs> So, ATM clusters are not going to be able to get the chest. We are going to be able to get the chest. We are going to be able to get the chest. We are going to be able to get the chest. We are going to be able to get the chest. We are going to be able Kunja 
তাসের বোতল বিয়ারের বোতল আর অসংখ্য ইট ঢো করেছে এবং ইটের আঘাতে অধিকাংশ আহত হয়েছে তারপরে ফিজিক্যালি দু চারজনকে হাতের কাছে পেয়ে এমন মার দিয়েছে এই যে বৃদ্ধ ওনাকে মেরেছে CPI workers alleged that BJP packed miscreants launched an unprovoked attack on the CBIM's pre-scheduled rally. The CPI workers also later retaliated. There was a program which was disrupted by the protest. CPIM MLA Panu Lal Saha and a journalist covering the incident were also injured during the clashes. A huge number of police and TSR personnel have been deployed in the area to defuse the tension. Sources in the police said crude oil pumps were hurled that led to the injuries. At least 16 people were killed and 24 wounded in the North Afghanistan blast on Wednesday. The blast took place in Jadia Seminary in Aibak city of Samangan during the afternoon prayer, reported Tolo News. A doctor of Samangan Provincial Hospital says that at least 15 dead and 27 injured people have been brought to the hospital, reported Tolo News. A Taliban official said that at least 10 students were killed as a bomb blast hit a religious school in northern Afghanistan. Local officials said the blast happened during the afternoon prayer. Interior Ministry spokesman Abdul Nafi Thakur said several others were wounded in the blast in Aibag, the capital of the northern Samangan province. So far, no group or organization has taken responsibility for the explosion. Blast and violence have become a regular affair in Afghanistan since the Taliban took control of the country following the ouster of the U.S.-backed civilian government last year. Rights groups said the Taliban had broken multiple pledges to respect human and women's rights. The Assam government distributed free scooters to meritorious students during a ceremonial event for meritorious students who successfully graduated from the higher secondary examinations 2022 under the Prakin Party schemes on Wednesday, November 30 at Kanabara Veterinary Field in Kohati. <laughs> Aro, Doctor Hemonto Biso Homa, as he podoke Luise, Satosati Hokom of Habu, Nupenona, Pabo, Aro, Balhobo, Satosati Vilake, Udom Habe, Agbahizabu Hokom Hobo, Pozukti Big Dart, Azi, Zugot, Mar Sorkarazi, Podoke Luise, Hokolo, Garzente, Maneo, Apuna Dhonoba. Assam Chief Minister Himanda Biswa Sarma was the chief guest at the event. He handed over free scooters to a few students at the event. The students who will be receiving free scooters, about 35,800 meritorious students, include girls. The scooters will be given to 29,748 girls who secured 60% sorry, and over marks and to 6,052 boys who secured 75% and over. I'm feeling pretty good that my hard work has been paid off and I'm pretty happy that I'm getting the reward. Well, there is nothing to be disheartened about. It is all about hard work. If you do your hard work, you obviously will get something in return as a result of that hard work. It's nothing to feel bad about. There are many opportunities you can get many opportunities. अच्छा लगा प्रधानमंत्री हम लोग को ये स्कूटी आज दे रहे हैं कि हमारे लिए बहुत सुविधाजनक होगा और आज जो इस अफसर पे आए हैं ये हमको बहुत अच्छा लगा है और आप जो बाकी लोगों को जो नहीं मिल रहा है जो स्टूडेंट हैं आपका दूर से ट्रेन से तो उनको क्या मैसेज देना था उनको यही मैसेज देना था कि हार्ड वर्क अगर करते तो आज उनको भी ये मिलता बस ही The Mikalia government on Wednesday held a meeting at Ripoy Deputy Commissioner's Conference Hall to examine the second phase of the boundary settlement in the remaining four areas of differences only in Ripoy district. There are four remaining areas of differences in Ripoy that need to be settled during the second phase of boundary settlement between Assam and Mikalia. In today's meeting, 
The regional committee led by Deputy Chief Minister Preston Taing Song accused only two areas of differences, that is, Block 2, which fall under Hima Kiriam CM ship, and Deshum Ria under Hima Milim CM ship. The two remaining areas, namely Nongwa Mautamur and Borduar, will be examined and discussed in the coming days. Speaking to media persons after the meeting, Preston Taing Song said the meeting discussed only two areas of differences. The main purpose of the meeting was to discuss thoroughly with the traditional heads before the commencement of the second phase of border settlement along the interstate border dispute within Assam and Mekalaya, Taing Son said. As of now, the state is trying to collect land documents and other supporting documents for the second phase of the settlement, he added. He said that the remaining two areas, that is Borduar and Nongrar, Mautamur, will be examined later. The Tribura Bharatiya Janata Party has come up with a new fund of Jum Lapazi in the state and the name of this fund is BGB, the Communist Party of India, Marxist State Secretary Jitin Chaudhuri has alleged. He made the allegation during a press conference that was conducted at the CPIM state office. He said there is no truth in the leaflets being held in the hands of the common people in the name of BGB programs. The CPIM State Committee strongly protested against the leaflet and the program of the BJP. We will now house it. What we did at the corner. Bound from Sarkar Sumete, Jerasta, Koresilo, Ibulu, are act to grab it. Pathor Poreni, a gram. आर शेखाने कोनो वही बिटूमिन पड़े नहीं सब भेंगे चुरे चोची रहे आचे आर नोटुन कुथाव नहीं किधर बोले रिचे इटा हलो त्रिपुरा जेल मानुषिक पोती कोटु तु को अस्वद्धा जना मिथ्या दिए सी अब अब मिथ्या दिए पार पावर जन्नो आरेक टम मिथ्या बोलो इटा हमरे बोले ची शेदिन एकुश तरीके जा हमारे जनसभा � যদি হিম্মত থাকে রাজনৈতিক নৈতিকতা থাকে সৎ সাহস থাকে 2018 এর নাজির বিধানসভা নির্বাচনে 299 টা প্রতিশ্রুতি দিয়েছিল একটা একটা করে কোন প্রতিশ্রুতি কি হাল হয়েছে কি করেছে বিজেপি সে রিপোর্ট কার্ড প্রকাশ করো Mizoram Chief Minister Zoram Tanga today chaired the meeting of the State Level Narcotics Coordination Center at the Chief Minister's Conference Hall, Aizol. The State Level Narcotics Coordination Center is the Apex Multi Agency Coordination Committee on Drugs Related Matters in the state. Chief Secretary Dr. Renu Sharma, in her opening address, highlighted the role and importance of state level NCORT, which includes monitoring the drug situation in the, in the state, addressing issues of coordination, capacity building, awareness generation, and monitoring utilization of funds and setting up of de addiction centers. The Narcotics Control Bureau, Mizoram Police, Excise and Narcotics Department, Social Welfare, and Tribal Affairs Department, and DSM Raffles gave presentation on various initiatives taken. Chief Minister Zoram Tanga, while appreciating the efforts of all, he made a clarion call to all government agencies to continue and strengthen their efforts in spite of the existing limitations since drugs remain one of the biggest threats to Mizo society. Highlighting the importance of the role played by civil societies in supply reduction, Zoram Tanga urged all law enforcement agencies to continue and strengthen their coordination with them. DGP Mizoram stated that prevention of drug trafficking remains a key focus area and reiterated the commitment of Mizoram police for coordinated efforts with all other agencies. Uh, for her presence today in Mizoram for the meeting and for her excellent call by the DCs. And I am told that all the DCs, all the district level uh, NAPAD committees are, have joined us through the meeting. Well, from Gawati, from Delhi, etc., from Mysore, etc. Good morning, sir. I'm Narendra Singh. I'm Narendra Singh. I'm Lalupur Silo, Chief Executive Officer, and as you know, I'm Lalupur Silo, Chief Executive Officer. I'm Lalupur Silo, Chief Executive Officer.
Good morning, sir. Myself, Rajesh here. I am Deputy Commissioner, Special Bureau Vice President. Thank you, everyone. Uh, sir, uh, with your uh, permission, may I now? Honorable Chief Minister, Mizoram, all members of the State NAPOD Committee, good morning to all of you. And the next NAPOD meetings in all the state governments, especially in the NER, we chaired by the Chief Minister. Deputy Commissioner of Lunglai Kulong Tungan today flagged off National Integration Tour to Hornbill Festival in Nagaland from Lunglai. The tour is organized and sponsored by the Lunglai Battalion of Assam Rifles with an aim to expose local students to different cultures and traditions in India and to motivate them in choosing armed forces as a career option in the future. The tour will also provide an opportunity to the kids to have a close interaction with the armed forces and to understand the basic functioning of the forces. A total of 13 students of Sacred Hearts School, Lung Lai, have been selected for the tour. Besides Naglin, the students will also be touring Silchar, Gohati and Shillong. Locals of Lung Lai Town expressed their gratitude towards Sam Raffles for the services rendered to South Mizoram Society. In so it has changed the perception of the Assam rifle in the Rumlai district. So it's what we have used to always say, in the right person in the right place, so everything will be coming very nicely. So it is one of the best examples of what the Assam rifle commandant is doing in Rumlai. Whether uh, he's always a backbone of the district administration wherever we are needing. <laughs> As the campaigning for the first phase of Gujarat Assembly elections ends on Tuesday, campaigning for the second phase quickly picked up on Wednesday. BJP's National President J.B. Nadda held a roadshow in Jamalpur, Katia in Ahmedabad Wednesday morning and interacted with doctors in the areas. Apart from Nadda, other leaders including Union Home Minister Amit Shah also held two public meetings and a roadshow in Asarwa. Veterans of all political parties are preparing to campaign on December 5. Meanwhile, speaking about holding the first phase of election in Gujarat, Chief Election Officer of the State, B. Parati, informed that 2 crore 29 lakhs 76,760 people are eligible to cast their votes. Uttarakhand's Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Tami introduced a bill in the State Legislative Assembly to provide 30% horizontal reservation to the women in public services. The Uttarakhand High Court had earlier imposed a stay on the move. However, the Supreme Court lifted the stay on Friday. Tami said his government is committed to protecting and promoting the interests of the mother power of Uttarakhand and the bill will help in development and bring equal opportunity for women. The U.S. Senate on Tuesday passed a legislation granting federal protections to same-sex and interracial marriages in the United States. The Senate passed the Respect for Marriage Act in a vote of 61 to 36, with 60 votes needed for passage. The bill requires the U.S. federal government to recognize a marriage between two individuals if the marriage was valid in the state where it was performed. According to U.S. media, it also guarantees recognition of marriages between states through the full fate and credit clause of the U.S. Constitution. The bill does not require U.S. states to issue marriages licenses contrary to their laws. In a statement, U.S. President Joe Biden said the Senate's approval of the Respect for Marriage Act is a bipartisan achievement, showcasing that Republicans and Democrats together support the right of LGBTQ and interracial couples to marry. With today's bipartisan Senate passage of the Respect for Marriage Act, the United States is on the brink of reaffirming a fundamental truth, love is love, and Americans should have the right to marry the person they love, President Joe Biden said in a statement released after the 61-36 vote.
Chimong Village and Tuensang Village signed a bilateral friendship accord on November 29 in Tuensang. On the occasion, the two villages pledged for mutual coexistence, cooperation and to advocate the social cultural well-being and to uphold, strengthen, respect and shield one another in any adversities. Chimonger and Tuensang are considered to be the largest villages of Sangdams and Changs. King Lise, an intermediary from Chimonger village, in his speech reminded the good relations shared between the two from the forefathers' time and said that to officially mark a historic day, both the communities will stand by one each other in good or worse joy or adversaries. He also encouraged Porto communities to always value and treasure the commitment and accord signed. MG Yangbo from Tuensang village in his intermediary speech said that the two villages, Chimonger and Tuensang, are the largest villages in own tribe circle and expressed happiness in two villages coming together. <laughs> That's all we have for now for more news. Keep watching Hornbill TV.